hello, hello. So are you guys ready to paint this piece or let me show you how I painted this piece? I'm gonna flip this around. So this piece, I originally painted it <clears throat> on a 10 by 10. So a little bit smaller surface. This surface is from cdwood.com. And in the pattern packet, it has all the colors listed. It has the surface that I used, which is this larger 12 by 12. And, um, but I just, I loved it on this smaller one. So what came after I painted and drew this design out was I thought that would be, hello, Holly Hanley. So good to see you on. I thought that would be a really cool rubber stamp. So I'm gonna flip this over. So I designed and created a rubber stamp that let's kind of get that glare off. So again, it's my Live Love Laugh Stamp. It's on sale. This is on my website. And I um I don't know, it just makes me smile. I love, love, love everything about him. And so rubber stamp on my website. After creating this, just thought it was super cute. In the pattern packet though, you get the line drawing. And this is a copyrighted image, especially since I have it now in my stamps, they're both copyrighted images. Um, but when you buy the pattern packet, you can change it to whatever size you want. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. If you buy the stamp, you can print that image on computer paper, you know, with your ink or paint and you can enlarge it on your printer, okay? So you can make it whatever size you want to. Same details and everything. Um, in the packet as well, I listed substitutions for colors. So um, for example, this piece was painted with the Media Fluid Acrylics. They're my absolute favorite paint to paint with. Um, but I gave you some substitutions in the e-packet, so I'm going to share with you as I paint this piece um, and give you, but if, you know, this is a kind of a dark green, whatever dark green you have, you can, you can use that color. It does not have to be exact, okay? So line drawing comes in the pattern packet, and what I did is this background, so I'll just turn it over and show you, this again is from cdwood.com. Chris Hoy, Cover Distributing, and the paper is optional. I decoupaged a piece of paper from Patty Rollinson, all right? And again, the numbers and everything are listed in the e-packet. And then it was a little on the bright side, so I did a wash of gesso. And my favorite gesso, but if you can't find this, you can also get this at decoart.com. Um, but any gesso is gonna work for you. I just would water it down so that you have a nice inky consistency gesso. To put the um, paper on, I used matte medium. Now I, I read the other day, someone said, I cannot find matte medium anywhere. They also carry matte medium in traditions and this is available at decoart.com, all right? So you can use decoupage medium. You can use anything that's going to decoupage paper onto the surface, let it completely dry, put a wash of gesso over it. Gesso will tone it down. So I will share that with you. Um, gesso is gonna tone things down for you. So then transferred my pattern, IdentiPen. I love, love, love these things. I have them on my website. It has two points, fine tip, a little bit thicker tip. Transferred the pattern on and I went over the entire thing with my IdentiPen, all right? Now, let's go ahead and do the background on here. <clears throat> let's move that out to the side. Move that over just a little bit. Okay, so what I wanna do first, so this has a layer of matte medium on it. That's gonna protect that paper. The pen 
The amazing thing about the IdentaPens is it doesn't bleed. It's not going to move. You can use it on fabric, wood, canvas, paper mache. Absolutely a phenomenal pen. So let me zoom in here just a little bit so that you can get the whole image. There you go. Okay. So I'm using the Media Misters in Shimmer Mr. Turquoise and um, Yellow Green. If you don't have these, you can use any kind of aqua turquoisey color. Um, Peacock Teal, Laguna, Bahama Blue, Desert Turquoise, whatever kind of blue aqua color you want. But I have to tell you, there really is no substitute for this. It's transparent, it's thin, it's permanent. It's one of my favorites uh, and my favorite color. So we're going to spritz this with a little bit of water. And I put my um, misters into a smaller little bottle. They're just more manageable for me to hold. And let me get some paper towel. Yes, they do, Jerry. Pampered Palette has a great selection of decor products. Um, okay, so I'm going to spritz this. So notice how I'm kind of doing it around the edges. And then I'm also going to, so I spritzed with water first. That's going to help carry the product. Hello, baby sister. Hope you're doing good. And then this is that um, yellow green. Now look how bright and in your face that is. I mean, that's like way bright. So then I'm going to spritz it with some more water. That matte medium is going to help protect that paper that we decoupaged on and the surface. Okay. And then from here, I'll lift it up. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> I will lift it up and just let this flow and move. Now, I already have one dry because, of course, this is going to take a while to sit here and dry. And, yeah, I don't want to spend my time with y'all having things dry. Nothing more boring than watching paint dry, right? So, and see how I'm just moving it around. I like that green-yellow in the center and that blue around the edge, okay? See how wet it is? But if you have um, a blow dryer or a heat tool, um, and let me just show you, these are my favorite. I'm going to have these on my website soon. This is the Ranger Heat It Craft Tool. It's very, very quiet. But you can get these at cdwood.com, Dick Blick, um, Amazon, just make sure you get the one that has the U.S. plug because there is one that has a European plug. And I saw that one of my friends did that the other day. So you do want to make sure that you get the U.S. plug for it. So we're going to let this completely dry. I'm going to move this over to the side. Let's clean up my little silicone mat here. This is just a silicone baking mat from Amazon. Cleans up beautifully. I'm going to throw that to the side. Well, I'm not going to throw it. I got so much paint on my rug the other day that I set it over to the other side. Now, I have one that's completely dry that I did before. Okay, so do you see how those colors, they're still a little bright. So what I want to do is, if I'm doing a background and I kind of want to tone things down, I use gesso which is kind of surprising sometimes. I know that um, you can use gesso for other things than prepping and priming a canvas or a surface. Um, it really is a great medium. So I'm going to take some of this and scoop it out with my brushes dry. Normally I would use a palette knife, but all my other palette knives are over on the other side of the room. So the lid back on that and I don't like to put a wet brush in my gesso because I don't want it to mildew but I'm using uh, the dynasty encaustic this is the one inch oval these will be on my website very soon it's very wet and what I'm going to do is really work that into that gesso make a nice inky puddle okay nice little inky puddle and then I'm going to brush this over the surface. 
right over the pen and everything. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to soften and tone down those background colors. So kind of just a little in my face. I can always add more color if I want to here and there, but for the most part, this just gives it a little bit of a frosted, soft, foggy look. Inky gesso. And then take a paper towel. And I like to use the Viva and just kind of wipe that back. But notice how that just toned down that surface so that it's not so in your face. Okay. And I am just going to wipe this up so I don't get my arm into it. There we go. Thank you so much, Connie. Yes, Paula, it, it kind of, this kind of is a little like on the ink side. Um, it's permanent. <laughs> if you saw my pictures on my Facebook post the other day, this is typically how my hands look pretty much every day of the week. So now I am going to give this a little bit of a dry. I want to kind of tone this down. I love that gesso technique too, Jolene. It really just kind of takes things down a notch instead of being so bright and in your face. I, I remember in my early days of painting, I would paint something very bright and I thought, oh, I gotta sand it off and you know, put it into a, a lighter color. And you know, there's just so many tricks and things that you can do to take care of those things. Gesso is my best friend. So, thank you, Elizabeth. So do I. I always love learning new things. I have to tell you guys, it's been a week of learning for me. I'm working on some things that are outside my wheelhouse, and I have, I've had to watch some videos and some things to um, learn how the process works, and it's been fun. I set my husband on a wild goose chase today to find something for a video that I have to do for a big box store, and let me just tell you, couldn't find it, but that's okay. We're going to use an alternative surface like we do as painters. Okay, now look at my pen. See, my pen work is still there. It hasn't bled, hasn't moved. Exactly why I love the Identa pen. So I used three different stencils, and the two that I have here are M square stencils. And M's two, let me turn this over so you can see it. So it's this poppy um, wallpaper stencil, and then this one, which is M22, the other one's M226. Those are both on my website. Um, this is a stencil line I have with Tracy Moreau. M squared is Moreau McTeer. So I'm going to use those on this side. And then the words are from um, the Crafters Workshop. So tcw.com. Jamie has amazing stencils on her website, and she has a whole bunch of artists that do stencils. Um, I do have a few of these on my website as well. So, of course, that's going to go down here later. Let's move that over to the side. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this one first, this M22, and a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Now, this is another one of those colors that it's kind of hard to match but any dark pink you have. You could do a little bit of royal fuchsia, you could do some alizarin crimson. These are transparent and very pretty. So I'm gonna add these just along the edge and I want a very faint, faint color. So I'm gonna put some of that out and I'm using my, this is a 5 8 Dynasty Stencil Pro brush. I do have these on my website now. They're just so good. I had to have them available for you guys um, that want it. Um, and I also sell them in a pack of three. So there's a one, a three quarter, and a five eighths. And can I just tell you the set? Amazing price. So, okay. So the five eighths and, um, stencil pro brush, I'm gonna load the tip of it up, swirl it around. Now this is key with stenciling, dry paper towel. You want to take the majority of it off. I want these to be soft 
and not so in your face. Now, if you get them too bright, the fix is let it dry and do a wash of gesso right over them. Okay, but I do want to, is if you think, oh, I still have no paint on my brush, I'm wiping it all off. Believe me, you have paint on your brush, especially with the fluid acrylics. They are highly pigmented and super, super bright. So what I wanna do is I just wanna move this stencil around and I'll show you a few little tricks. So soft circular motions, counterclockwise, clockwise. And let me just move that down just a little bit. Okay, and I can move this. So I'm not using the whole stencil, I'm just using pieces and parts. See how I'm just using a little bit here, a little bit there. Get my stencil away from my paint. And I don't even care if all of it gets, you know, covered in. I just want to have some of it showing here and there. Haven't reloaded my brush, still good to go. In fact, that one's probably gonna be the brightest, which is where I started. And I'm just gonna turn this. Now this is a key trick too. You can flip your stencil over. So I'm using this side, but if I want that to go a different direction so it doesn't all look cookie cutter, simply just flip your stencil over. I'm using such little paint that it's not gonna build up on the other side and get into what I'm stenciling. Now notice I haven't reloaded my brush and look how much pigment I still have from that fluid acrylic. Okay, skipping some space. I'm gonna flip my stencil again. Now, when I start to realize that my paint is getting lighter and lighter, push down a little bit harder. A little bit more pressure is going to take more of that paint off. Okay, so I have a little bit, look at how pretty that is, okay? Now here's another trick. I'm just gonna zoom out just a little. There we go. Okay. If you feel like you have it too bright, while it's semi-wet, I could take a baby wipe and I could wipe some of that off. But again, I could take the gesso and I can just do a wash of gesso. But I love how bright. It's faint, but it's bright enough, okay? So let's move that one aside. Before I do that, I wanna show you that typically what I do with my brushes and my stencil is a little bit of hand sanitizer, which I know all of us have at the ready. Brush it over your stencil. It washes your brush at the same time. Flip your stencil over. And then I just throw those into a little tub over here with some water in it, okay? Rinse out your stencil brush if you want to, but it's also a great tip if you wanna use your stencil brush for another color. You can use hand sanitizer. When the hand sanitizer evaporates, your brush is good to go. Okay, right back here. All right, so let's get some white. And I'm using the um, titanium white in the media line. You can also use, um, Warm white, soft white, snow white, titanium white, um, any kind of white that you wanna use. Let's load that on my palette. Now this stencil, I love the, and it doesn't matter which one you do first, okay? If you use this one or the other, but the I love the little poppies. Um, and so I kinda wanted to make sure that those were somewhere in the corners. And I have another stencil brush here. That's clean just to save time. Again, swirl it around on your brush. Wipe it off on a paper towel. I'm just going to softly, oops, I already tell that I have too much paint, so I just swiped it across my paper towel. Now this is gonna kind of soften that paint as well. Now this, I didn't get the whole image right there because it was on the corner, but look what I did with my finger and it just kind of softens it into the background. So I'll come up here, put another one, 
And again, I have such little paint on my brush. I don't really care that if I tape it down, it's not going to move um, and make that big of a mess. So I'm going to flip my stencil over up here. Again, softly go over, soft circular motions, very little pressure. You see why I get paint on my hands? <laughs> And then let's do this one down here. Okay. And then I do want to take some of these other elements. So I'll just kind of move it around and fill in the rest of this border with some of these elements. So not really the poppies per se, but some of these little scrolls. And what's cool is, again, I'm not using the whole design. I'm just using pieces and parts. And let me tell you guys, too, I see the comments popping up, but I don't want to get distracted. <laughs> so if there are questions, by all means, I will go back and look at those and answer them later. Um, I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention, but at the same time, I want to get through this uh, little demo for you guys, and I will answer your questions um, afterwards, okay? Okay. So let's put a little bit. And again, that white is gonna to help tone down a little bit of that pink, soften that look. I kind of wiped this one out a little too much. So let's get, let's get that leaf right back in there. Such a great stencil. And just layer right over. I can layer some of those little dots right there. All right, so that basically is our background, okay? And again, if you have too bright a color, you can do a, a soft little wash of gesso over it, and it will tone that down for you, okay? But I just love the look, and I love how the white poppies goes right over that um, darker color. If it's kind of bright anywhere for me, again, it's where I started, um, the very first swipe of color. So I am going to pick just the tiniest touch of gesso and tone that down just a little. And while I have it on the brush, I'll just kind of wipe it over everything. Soften that look. <clears throat> and then let's get a, um, our heat tool and let's dry that real quick. How quiet that is. Okay, so I'm just going to... And you do want to move it around. I don't want any lines, so I'm noticing on the camera there that it's showing a little bit. Of, so I'm just going to kind of wipe that with my hand, make sure that I don't have those brush strokes. Smooth that gesso out. There we go. Okay. So let's turn our palette around here so I don't get my hand in that. It's either usually my hand or my elbow or my sleeve. Um, and I'm going to base coat my um, bird with some Titan Buff. You can also use um, light buttermilk or even um, kind of a little bit more on the tan side, like burlap or oyster beige. So any of those, um, I think light buttermilk probably work best to um, as a substitute for Titan Buff. But nice little... Let's zoom in just a little bit here so you can see the bird. Okay, and I'm gonna move my original so I can see it a little bit better because um, I don't follow my own directions, which is funny. <laughs> so if I do something different than this in the e-packet, it's just because, you know, I, I'm just painting. So, um, Titan Buff, I'm gonna get my number, let's get my number. Let's do like a number 10 or a 12 will work. A little bit of water, tap it off on your paper towel. A little water, tap it off. And I'm gonna pick up that Titan Buff 
and I'm just going to go right over everything. Now this is a transparent enough color that I'm gonna be able to see my lines, okay? So I'm just gonna go right over everything. And when I'm completely done and everything is dry, I go back over the entire design using the IdentiPen. So it brings everything back just like, wow, and in your face, and it brings out the details, and it makes that color pop. So all those colors are going to completely come back um, for the outline when we're done. Okay, so a little more Titan Buff. Kind of slap that on there. I'm not worrying about the legs right now. And then on my um, my little tail feathers, I'm gonna go to my number eight flat, just so that I can almost do like a comma stroke or a daisy stroke and fill those in. So kind of sit on the corner, push, pull, lift. And if I go over the lines, that's fine too, because I know that I will go back and re-outline that. Okay. Just like that. Make sure everything, uh, we need to get our little curly cue here. You could do a liner brush if the eight's too big. I'm just gonna use the corner. Fill that in. A Little bit of the beak. Okay, and on my original, believe it or not, you can see some of the background color. It might look super opaque, but I can see some of that bluey green background color and that's totally fine. I don't wanna to see too much. So where it's a little bit more um, bluey green, I am gonna do just another little wash of color. And with a wash, I have a little bit of water in my brush, a little bit of paint. And these fluid acrylics are, like, like I said, transparent. This color is a little bit more on the opaque side. This and the white. I did find some um, fluid acrylics. I think it was createforless.com. Dick Blick has some. Amazon has some. Um, I know they're difficult to come by, but hopefully, hopefully soon. We will start to see them on shelves or in stores. And when they're produced again, I plan on carrying them because, again, they're my favorite acrylic. Okay. So, again, another little wash of color there. Don't care if I can see brush strokes. Painting a poinsettia on a glass disc. Hi, Peggy Jones. Yes, so on um, Deco Arts YouTube channel and then also on Make It Artsy, I did a PBS show July of last year um, and did a reverse painting poinsettia on glass. And it was so much fun. And I was so nervous. Oh my goodness. Julie Faith Ann Bowser is amazing there on Make It Artsy. And I did had two segments. Okay, so that's dry. Yeah, quick and easy. All right, let's do a little bit of shading. So, quinacridone gold. Can I just tell you guys? And I don't know why that's freezing up a little bit. I just noticed that the um, when I was blow drying there, it kind of froze up. The quinacridone gold. It's hard to find a substitute in the Americana or any acrylic line for that matter because it's such a specific color. I would say the closest thing to it, you could use a little bit of burnt sienna, um, but there really is a difference. This has a little bit um, richer, redder tone than burnt sienna. And I have not found an acrylic color that really matches this. Um, but, you know, if all else fails, use burnt sienna. 
And let's get my 3 8 angle brush here. Oh, that's awesome, Susan. Uh, this one is so amazing. And again, I love how quiet it is. So let's zoom in a little bit more. You don't need to see his legs right now. Okay. Um, I am going to take an, a liner brush I'm using. This is my uh, Dynasty Black Gold. Let's see, like a number two round. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And I'm going to brush right over his legs. All those little lines that I really did not need to draw on. Um, I'll probably still be able to see them. But if I can't, that's quite all right. And I'm just going to paint his legs. And then when it gets down here, I'm just going to kind of rub my finger right where it ends so that I don't end up with a real harsh line. Very haphazard. Again, I'm going back over the pen lines, just trying to stay within those lines. These legs actually remind me of Peggy Harris and her signature black and white and yellow. Um, and, and it reminds me of um, Mackenzie Child, you know, the that pattern of black and white check. Okay, so... My 3 8 angle brush, if you're not familiar with an angle brush, it has a toe and it has a heel. What I love about this brush is I don't have to worry about this corner because having it at an angle helps me float the color on here as long as my brush is loaded correctly. So with a little bit of moisture in my brush, I'm going to pick up on the toe. Now this, this is, I think, key. If you come here to the side of your paint, you're probably going to pick up too much. So I'm just going to touch the corner right there and then come right to the side of my paint. Okay, so just touch that corner. Come and flatten on your palette. Now, see the moisture. It's going to bring that color, and you'll get a gradation from darker over to where there's no paint. But it bleeds just a little bit. So I'm going to take my brush and with the toe that has paint on it, I'm going to float that right along that inside edge of my bird. Okay, you can go right back over it. You don't wanna go over it too many times because we certainly don't want it to lift. But instead of just pulling it, I'm doing little taps. And we'll take care of our beak later but I'm just going over those lines and everything. Pick up a little bit more paint. And I'm gonna go on the inside of my wing here, which I love, um, this little paisley pattern wing. And then just use the toe to kind of get on some of those sides right in that little curl. Let's go down here. Pull that paint. Right over those flowers and everything. Like I said, we're going to paint over those a little bit under his beak there. Take your finger and just kind of soften it out. You can use a mop as well. I'm typically too lazy <laughs> to pick up a mop and put the brush down that's in my hand, so I just use the brush that I have. Okay. Now, I am going to do the wings and everything later um, in here with a little bit more color, so I'm going to leave those for now. And I like a really nice float of color. You don't want this to be real wimpy. You know, you want to be able to see that color. You just don't want to see a line. So if you slide on the chisel edge, you're going to get a line. If you slide on the flat at an angle, you're going to get that pretty gradation of color. Okay, and I got a little here, but that's okay because I'm going to shade there. So I'm going to pick up my number eight flat. And I do want to cover these in a little bit more. So on the corner, push, pull, lift, 
push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, sit on that corner. And I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying that because that's exactly what I hear in my head every time I do that stroke. Push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift. I do want to get these covered in a little bit more. All right, we'll rinse that out. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my uh, my number two. You can use a liner brush. This is the number two round by Dynasty. And just kind of work that into the brush, a little bit of white. And I'm going to start painting in some of these elements. So again, my little flower around his eye. Again, push, pull, lift. And as you're pulling, you're lifting up on that pressure as you come toward the center. Push, pull, lift. And get that nice little daisy stroke. Push, pull, lift. Okay. And look how far that paint goes. And these fluid acrylics are so highly pigmented, it does not take a whole bunch of paint. So I know some have a little sticker shock when they see it because it definitely is more expensive than a two ounce bottle of paint. But they go such a long way. Okay, so look how cute. Cute, cute, cute. Hello, Monica from Lima, Peru. So happy you're here. All right, so we also have um, pink on our flower, but I want it to pop a little bit more. So I am gonna come in and do a little white. And if you've ever gotten a package from me, you know an order or a package. I, these are my flowers that I always draw on the envelopes around the address. Just something I've drawn for, oh my gosh, I can't even remember how long. Lots of years. Same with the leaves. Okay, so we're just going to fill in those flowers. Have another little one down here. And these are just like the shape of a heart. Tiny little shape of the heart and then fill it in. A little bit more paint. Thank you, Laura. I love this color combination too. That quinacridone gold goes so well with turquoise, magenta, just such a great color. Okay, so we have our flowers there. There, there in our eye. Um, I'm going to, since I have white on my brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in this leg a little bit more. Okay, let's rinse that out. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green gold. So this is, um, this is kind of a harsh color. Let me say, I love green gold. On its own, to me, unless it goes over something, it's a little on the harsh side. So I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of white. Hello, look at the gesso on my finger. <laughs> Hello, Pat from Utah, Nancy from Houston, Texas. Hope you're all thawed out down there. Um, so if you're using regular Americana, again, look at the difference. I mean, it's a little bit on the yellowy side, but this is one of my go-to light green colors. You can use margarita, you could use um, sour apple, any light green color that you like. A little bit of that color and a touch of white. The white's gonna tone it down. It's also gonna make it a little bit more opaque. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use my number two round. I have too much water in my brush. Okay, and so I'm just going to fill in these leaves I'm a firm believer, use the brush that works best for you. Use the size brush that works best for you. If you're fighting trying to use a brush, um, you probably need to use a different brush or a different size um, brush to get in there and make it work. You have to remember, you are in charge of that. Okay. 
fill in our leaves. And look how I'm just kind of, you know, putzing that color around. It's just kind of filling it in, smoothing it out. It's a very soft, colorful piece. And this is a little different for me. I typically do my leaves dark and then I come in with the light. But I liked this um, going in with the light first and then coming back with uh, floating that dark in. I just thought it added to some of the softness and brightness of this pretty piece and not taking it too heavily painted or too dark to begin with. These little scroll strokes. And if you go outside the lines, quite all right. You get to go back over that with an identi pen and you will fill it all in. All right, so we've got our three leaves, got our three flowers. I'm going to get, um, let me think, a little bit of cobalt teal hue. So I'm gonna get a little bit of cobalt teal hue, put that on my palette. Now this color, again, um, difficult to match Bahama Blue in Americana would be a good match for it. Nice, light, bright, um, but such a great color. And I want to put that with a little bit of this green gold. So green gold, little bit of um, cobalt teal hue, touch of white. Green gold, cobalt teal hue, little bit of white. And I want to go around that circle around his eye. Okay. Hi, Lorna. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Carly and Pat. Every now and then I'm looking up and seeing you guys are joining on. Thanks for being here. And let's get a little bit of black. Just a little bit of carbon black. So when I have a bigger area to fill in, like even though these aren't that big, but little sections on my legs, I tend to use paint instead of my pen. I don't want to waste the ink on my pen if I can use paint. So again, with my number two round and a little um, black, I'm just going to fill in these little sections. So you can kind of draw them out. And I notice I'm doing like a slight little U shape. That slight little U shape is gonna help give that appearance that his legs are round. That one got a little big, didn't it? It will. And they don't have to match because this, you know, this foot's a little bit further in the front. So I'm just gonna curve those up. Again, that slight little U stroke. Fill it in. I don't even think it's worth, you know, putting the pattern back down to try and get those lines exactly where I have them because you can put them where you want them. This simple. Let's do a little right there. And then while we're here, let's just go ahead and fill in his feet. Again, black paint, my number two round brush. Filling in those tiny little clumps. I'm not a big fan of bird feet, or feet for that matter, but, um, and then we'll shade underneath his feet and everything later, okay? And then also a little bit in his eye. Now what I'm gonna do is take my heat tool and dry all that. Thank you so much, Janet. This is recorded, Carol. It will be here on my Facebook page and it will also be over on my YouTube channel, which is just Sandy McTeer. Um, if you put that in my YouTube channel, Sandy McTeer Design should come up. Would love for you guys to follow me there. I plan to do more over on my YouTube channel as well. 
Okay, so just kind of give it the little touch test. And it's feeling pretty dry to me. And then we have some of that quinacridone magenta out. So I'm gonna grab a smaller angle. I have, um, this is a quarter inch angle brush. Get a little bit of water and I'm gonna pick up on the toe only a little bit of quinacridone magenta. So the color that's on our flowers is also gonna be on our eye, kind of that triangle of design. Okay, you've got a little magenta here, a little magenta there, a little magenta there. Just helps it flow and so, oops, a little too much. So I just wanna float this color right around the base of the um, green here, at the base of my daisy petals. And I got so much water in that. Watch what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna touch it. Wipe it off, rinse out my brush. The color kind of migrated more than I wanted it to. And I'm gonna switch to my 3 8 angle. There we go. Because I don't want this too far out. Right at the base. Make sure it looks round. If you go over the green, that's okay. You can come back and put a little bit of green there. Okay. So we have that color around his eye. Now, when we come back with our um, IdentiPen and go around that, it's going to break it up because right now he looks like he's got a bloodshot eye, okay? Um, and we don't want that. So the, um, the paint is gonna help, I mean the line from the IdentiPen is gonna help take care of that. So with my 3 8 angle, again, I'm gonna rinse that out, wipe it off. A Little bit of that quinacridone magenta on the toe of that brush. And I'm going to start at the base of the petal here and I'm gonna walk that color up just a little bit. So these I didn't want very heavily painted. I wanted them to look like they were pink, but not fully painted pink, if that makes sense. So at the base, and then walking that color up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry. With my heat tool, speed it up just a little. And then I'll do the same thing down here. Just get a little bit of that color. Because on my original look, let me pull this up. So notice how this one's a little bit on the wider side. This one right at the tips is a little bit wider. So we're going to float over this one again. And again, I think it's so magical at the end when we come back with the IdentiPen, you'll see how all these colors just pop. Just like that. Just soft little float of color. Ah, look how bright and pretty that is. All righty. Thank you so much, Jerry. He just makes me smile. I just think he's so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the um, quinacridone gold, just a little bit on the toe of the brush. I feel like one of those makeup influencers. You know how they always do the brush and show you exactly what's on it? <laughs> okay, so I want to do the right side of each of these little feathers. So I'm just going to Wash that color on, float that color on right on that right hand side. So I have the heel of the brush slightly lifted. The toe is down, but it's not on the chisel edge. That corner is actually touching my surface. And that's important. If you use the, the chisel edge, you're gonna end up with a very harsh line. I'm just going over it one more time to kind of soften it. 
And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the bottom half, oops, a little too much, bottom half of these little tail feathers. And I'll show you a way to, if you get too much, you can always come back and fix that up. Oop, running out of paint. So where my first one started, a little bit on the darker side, just pick up some of that paint, put it down here. Okay, oh, I'm loving him. All right, I am gonna go back to my um, quarter inch angle brush. Find that in my water basin, which is not good. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of sap green. And remember I told you if you have Americana, you can use, my go-to is like plantation pine. But notice the difference. You know, this is, this is transparent. Um, this is just my go-to in regular Americana. Something like a black forest might be a little too dark. Evergreen would be fine. Um, but a little bit of sap green. And again, I'm pick up a little bit on the toe of the brush only. And right along the base of these leaves, I'm just doing a small little float of color. Now watch on the edges, I'm kind of rounding it. And I'm gonna round it and bring it up just a little bit on the sides. A little bit more on that edge there. Let me zoom in. How about that? That would help, wouldn't it? Okay. So small little strokes. And what's going to happen is that transparent sap green is going to allow that um, green gold to show through so that you get a darker at the base, lighter at the top, Okay, a little bit more sap green. Get kind of right here at the base. And I'm not doing one little stroke. I'm, I'm tapping that brush, working that paint in, bringing and walking that color up just a little to fill in that leaf. Okay, this is whimsical and fun. Nothing precise or really exact. Let's get right there, hello. Again, right at the base of the leaf. Bring that around and then just kind of walk the color up just a little bit. Just like that, okay? You just wanna make sure that you don't have a like a strong line. I feel like I have a little bit of a line there so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more on that side just like that okay. and then a little bit on this one and I haven't reloaded my brush I have enough pigment in there it's going to bring that paint right up on that leaf this is the other thing like I just came back with dark paint one thing with these um, fluid acrylics as well is I found that just move on to the next one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that paint and then I'll get aggravated um, and let it dry, and you can come back and layer more on it. And I find that too with the, even with the regular acrylics, that let it dry, come back, layer another color or wash right over it. But going over it and over it and over it lifts that color. Hi, Verity. Hi, Heidi. Thank you so much. Okay, now on the um, the little scroll strokes, I want a little bit of that green right along the bottom. So notice how my brush is at an angle. So the heel, I'm pulling and the toes following. And it's just going to lay that color right at the base of that scroll. Same with that one. And then I'm going to turn this. Try not to give you guys too much whiplash. And get the bottom of that scroll. Bottom of that scroll. It's a little tricky on this one. You might have to come up on the toe just a little bit just to lay in some of that. 
You can also use a liner brush. You just don't want it to look like a line. And I have a neighbor outside jamming to some music. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. <laughs> okay. How cute. He's coming together, isn't he? All righty. So I do want to put a little bit of white. So just like I um, did. Now that's looking a little bit of a mess. But again, when we go over it, it's going to be fine. A little bit of white on the toe of the brush. And just like I floated that quinacridone gold around the bottom, I want to float a little bit of white along the top. A little white on the toe of the brush only. Look how little, I have very little paint on that brush. It's funny, Jolene, I used to not be a surface turner. I used to feel like, you know, there's so much with painting right here, with turning your wrist and, you know, moving it and making it work. I know I could come in and do that, but it's so much easier to turn it. So why, why fight it? but I used to kind of be a little bit of a stickler, like oh, I'm not turning my piece. Whatever makes it easier. Maybe that's just getting older. Okay, so that just brightens that up, doesn't it? And we're gonna do the same thing for these little guys right down here. And I'm just gonna do it on the other side of this quinacridone, um, quinacridone gold, right on this little section here. Again, just brightens those up. And since we have our angle brush with white, I'm gonna slide it on the chisel edge. Slide out just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna slide it on the chisel edge and I'm gonna go right down from the top on the back side of his legs. Okay, so slide on the chisel edge. Just to kind of give a little bit of a highlight. And then same thing on his, ugh, these claws, <laughs> his little bird claws. Little tiny touch of highlight there. Nothing, nothing exact. So I'm gonna come back to my um, number two round, forgot which brush it was. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the green gold, sap green. Let's come in and fill in our little circles. So sap green, green gold, just mixed both of them on my brush. Kind of brush mixed, I didn't mix it down to one color. Picked up a little bit of this, a little bit of that and mixed it together and we'll paint those in. I am gonna paint, I missed this little guy right here. Paint him in. All righty. And then I'm just gonna wipe off my brush, pick up a little bit of the um, cobalt teal hue, little touch of white. So I have that green on my brush, cobalt teal hue, and it just gives you a brighter green. And we'll fill those little centers in. All right, rinse that out. Actually, you know what, I want to, um, that same color, I want to come back and fix this guy up just a little bit. It got a little wonky when I did that circle earlier. Okay. Transparent yellow iron oxide. You could use, oh goodness gracious, antique gold, golden straw, raw sienna, um, just, you know, a nice transparent golden yellow, yellow ochre. You don't need much. And I just did that for his beak. Kind of wanted it to be on that yellow tone, different than the quinacridone gold, but enough of a yellow um, tone to make it look pretty golden yellow and I'm just going to soften it right there where it meets the face 
Let's dry that. Thank you, Elizabeth. I think you look sweet too. And Susan, my hands are always, always messy. I, I always say um, when I teach, if you don't have paint on your hands when you leave my class, I want you to sit down and put paint on your hands because then it, you know, it means to me that you had some fun. So, all right. So what do I, um, there was something I was going to add. Oh, quinacridone magenta, excuse me, quinacridone gold. Just like I did around the body, I want to do the same thing around his beak. So right up underneath the top of his beak right up underneath the little um, center line right there. Kind of haphazard, and look how I'm touching it with my finger. I just want to soften that look. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're gonna let him completely dry so that we can um, go over him with the IdentiPen, but I want to move on to the Let's come out here just a little bit. There we go. Okay, a little bit more, huh? Make my screen. All right, so um, if you've seen me paint, you know I love splatter. Huge, huge fan of splatter. I love the way it softens the piece. I love, um, I don't know, and, and typically I will do it with my light and my dark, so either Payne's gray or black or white. A lot of times I'll use colors that I've used in the piece. Um, so let's go ahead and take care of underneath his feet first. We will stencil on our piece and then do a little splatter and I'll show you how to finish the ends. And then we will outline him with our IdentiPen. Now the bigger the brush, the bigger the splatter. So I'm gonna use my number, um, let's get my number eight. I want it wet come over here I want it wet and I want to come right over here and make this nice and inky okay so I'm gonna do black first I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll come and do white um, after we do our letters and everything so number eight num um, black paint inky and you want to tap this brush over the handle of another brush so the middle of this brush to the middle of this brush. If you do it on the ferrule, it doesn't work so great. And I, as much as I don't mind paint on my fingers, I do not like to use a paintbrush and have that go underneath my fingernail. So I will come in with this brush and where the head of that brush is, is where the paint's gonna go. I don't mind if it gets on my bird, but if I don't want it somewhere, you have to do this immediately, okay? Now, we don't want it snow and black. You just wanna put some of this splatter here and there, but not everywhere. I know I want some right in that bright green section. Okay, again, it gets on your bird. You can wipe it with your finger or you can come back with your clean brush and wipe it away. So what I wanna do now is take a dry paper towel, lay it down, and touch it. That's going to give it a stained look instead of a heavily painted look. Now my hand's not pressing real hard and I'm not pressing every single dot. Oop, got a little smear right there. I'll put some white but let me hold this up so you can see it. So what happens is you get some darker spots, some lighter spots and the paper towel tones it down. Okay. So I'm gonna hit that with the heat tool real quick. Okay. Now let's go to our Live Love Laugh stencil. Again, love this stencil. Um, it has a cute little butterfly, um, but I know that I don't want any part of um, the flower. So blue painters tape will help you mask off anything that you don't want showing or going through with paint. So 
just kind of tape off those elements. And I am gonna cover the butterfly. Okay. Now, highly recommend that, you know, stand up. So I'm gonna stand up real quick. You wanna make sure this is straight. You could use a T-square, I just eyeball it. And I wanna bring it a little over to the right. And I would say that Liv comes to about, it's probably about halfway on his body, meaning about right there. Over to the right. And I am going to tape this in place because I don't want it to move. I'm gonna pick up some black paint, swirl it around on my palette. Paper towel, wipe it off. Soft circular motions. Counterclockwise, switch direction and go clockwise. Very little pressure, especially starting off. As your paint starts to dissipate, you can put a little more pressure, but just nice, light little pressure. I'm not big into stenciling like this. It hurts my hand, um, but you certainly could do that. It's easier to layer the color than it is to try and clean up a whole big hot mess of paint underneath your stencil. All right, so. There we have our stencil. And I wanted this to stand out a little bit more. So coming back with a little bit of white paint, you can do a little bit of a shadow with white. It's just on that left side. Okay, so a little bit of white. Aloha, Shirley. Oh, how I miss going to Hawaii. My parents had a home in Kapolei, Hawaii for 12 years. I think I went seven times and oh, just miss it. Alrighty, so you get the gist. Not sure I'm gonna do this for all of them, but um, I'm also not a big fan of how the bridges on a stencil separate things. So this one's pretty good, um, you know, with the ease, not too separated, but you could always come in and attach it with a little bit of black paint if you have anywhere that is um, separated from the bridge, meaning that piece that holds the stencil together for you. But I just, I love the font on this stencil. Um, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It is, hmm, I don't have it handy. Um, Joanne, Joanne Sharp, I have to look. Anyway, it's on uh, my website, but it's also a TCW stencil. I just think it's playful and fun. So a little bit of white and you can come in um, probably a thinner little liner brush maybe up here because these are very tight and my number two um, it has a little bit more bristle so I'm, I'm being a little daring right now hoping it doesn't go over but guess what if it does I can always lay my stencil back in place and go over it with some black This makes those letters pop, doesn't it? Okay, a little bit on the H. And I just notice I'm just going over lines. If it's <laughs> like that line was in the way, if it's in the way, I'm just gonna go over it. A little under that L. It's 
brighten those just a little bit. Okay, little tiny bit down here. I know I'm missing some spots. I'll go back and fill those in. Alrighty. Now, underneath his feet, I just want to add a little bit of shading. Um, those, you can use carbon black, but one of my go-tos, um, I just love Payne's Gray. It's got a softness to it. Um, carbon black can be a little bit on the harsh side. So I want to come in with my 3 8 angle and pick up a little bit on the corner of that brush. And I'm just gonna slide it up underneath his feet. Now look what I'm doing. I'm going right over his feet. They're kind of in the way. And I'm just right up underneath that pen line. This is thinner and lighter than the paint that's on his feet. So it's going to just kind of wash right over it. And then just kind of, you know, swipe that. You don't want it to end on a harsh line. Just like that. Do want a little bit more right there. Alrighty. So we've kind of grounded him. He's got a little bit of space to sit on. Okay, let's do some white splatter. I'm just gonna get my like number 10 here. White paint, inky, inky. Hi, Betty, so glad you found me. This is recorded, you'll be able to come back here and watch it, it'll also be on my um, YouTube channel. Okay, so again, middle of this brush, middle of this brush, wherever the head of the brush is, that's where the splatter is going to go. And I want to move it around. I don't want it snowing. I just want a little bit of splatter to soften that look. I do want some right there where I got it spattered too much. Okay. Um, Paper towel, I'm gonna leave it for a second. I think it, like in a lot of my directions too, I'm like, leave it for a minute. I really don't mean like a full minute. Just leave it for a second. And then lay your paper towel down, lightly press. Not always necessary. Sometimes I like that full splatter look, but since this has kind of got a soft, whimsical look, I don't want anything too harsh. Okay, now, Cannot wait to show you this part. Ooh, let's zoom out just a touch. All right, I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Love using my hands when I paint. Thank you, Sue. Thanks for your text today, I appreciate you. Got it worked out. Awesome, thank you, Cindy. Okay, you just wanna make sure, kinda of give it the little touch test, make sure that it is completely dry because you never wanna use your IdentiPen when um, you have wet paint. It will ruin your pen, all right? So it has a thin end and it has a thick end. I outlined everything to begin with, the bigger elements with the fat end the flower, the leaves, the fly, um, excuse me, the little sections I did with the thinner end, all right? It just, um, it makes it not as harsh. So going over elements, you're gonna see how these just start to pop. And I did tiny little, I don't know why, just thought it'd be super cute with little circles going up the, petals. Went the opposite direction on that leaf. Okay, 
and you're just going to outline everything. But look how that just makes that pop in comparison to everything else. Okay. And it helps separate things. So my flower got a little kind of run into each other with the petals there. And on this, I just added some little details at the base of each petal by kind of going up with a few little detail lines. We've got some highlights still to add here and there. But again, you're just gonna go right over all of your little elements. And this, um, for the past, oh gosh, maybe four years, this has been a seminar piece that I've taught. Um, and I pulled it out of the seminar lineup. I thought it would be a fun thing to paint here with you guys. So anything you don't want to be too um, heavy, you'll want to use the thin line um, end of the IdentiPen. And then things that you want a little bit bolder, like I do his body, I'm going to go with the thicker end. Okay, look at that. I mean, just look how that makes his eye completely pop. And I see a couple places I didn't quite reach the center. You can just come right back and touch that. over all those lines and then I am going to oh, let's do his little beak I'm going to go to the fatter tip okay and then I just kind of added a little dot there thought it'd be cute You want to be able to watch where your hand's going. So I'm watching the tip of my pen more than I'm looking at my pattern. That will kind of help you stay on those lines a little bit better than looking at the line and hoping that your pen follows. Okay, now notice that here I went a little bit high. I'm just gonna come back with some quinacridone um, gold and I'll just fill that in. And I do want these to be a little bit bolder. So just go right over them. Okay. Get a little bit bolder on that. Oh yeah. But look how he just, I mean, he just pops, doesn't he? Just makes it. Um, and I'll share a picture of something with you as well when I get done of how I use it on fabric. Again, I'm just going to go right down the front and back of his leg. And leave that. And then a little bit of highlight. He needs a tiny touch, a little highlight on his eye. So I'm just gonna give him a little bit of white there. I am going to touch these tiny little dots. And you could paint the dots and then outline them, but I just did those tiny little circles um, with the pen and I'm just gonna come back in and dot those with white. Let's scroll in so you can see those details. Um, I don't have one here, but I'm going to give a little bit of a highlight on that flower, maybe a little there. I want to brighten these a little bit. So again, just a little bit of white. You can always brighten these if you want to brighten that a little bit more. But 
But even though you can't see it on the white, it's best just to pull the line than try and just do the black sections um, because you will, you will see that kind of start and stop. Oh, I just think it's so cute. Cute, cute, cute. All righty. So we've got him all outlined. Doesn't he look adorable? Um, I am going to fix that shading real quick because if I don't, I'll forget it. And whoever wins the giveaway, which is for the um, stencils in the original piece, um, that's one giveaway. And then my original that I'm painting right now, not my original original, <laughs> but this piece that I'm painting now. And again, all you have to do is comment, um, like, share with your friends if you would, especially your painting friends and painting groups. Um, I'd love for you to go follow my YouTube channel. Um, there's certain things you can do on different platforms, and I really would like to start doing more on YouTube. And um, at some point, you have to have like so many followers and so many view times. So I'm working on that. Would love y'all's help. Okay, so fix that shading. See how that just went right into that space I left? I want to add some shading right up underneath him. Again, just to, um, I don't know, kind of separate him from the background a little bit. So with my 3 8 angle, I'm gonna put a little bit of Payne's Gray and just float some of that color right up underneath him, going right over the legs. Up, and then just kind of swipe your finger. So see how I did that? As you're coming here, and again, not wimpy, we wanna be able to see that shading and then slide it so that you don't end up with a harsh line. Little underneath his beak. Just like that. All righty. So I am going to uh, make sure that he is completely dry, everything is dry before I do this next step. And I love this next part because it kind of um, frames in the entire piece, gives it a little bit of a vignette look. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks, Carol. Oh, Denise, you're so sweet. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Linda Coley. That's sweet. Um, so glad you found me today. Um, that's even on, like when I go to Tracy Moreau or um, other Holly Hanley, all those people's uh, YouTube channels. Um, just found a new one, Monica. Um, if you watch their, the ads, you know, those that are monetized actually get a little tiny, tiny. I mean, we're talking cents but they get a little bit of money from it. And so anything I could do to help support. Okay, let's frame this in. And what I'm talking about is this right here. So new, look at the difference. So see how that's dark and it kind of brings your eye into, I think especially right in here where it has that bright light. You could leave it like this, but do you see the difference? And I am already noticing another difference. The white on here is a lot brighter than I have on this piece. So I might go back and add some white. But to get that vignette look, you want a baby wipe. Wrap it around your finger. And hello, how funny is that? Kind of looks like chicken wire, doesn't it, on my baby wipe. So wrap that around your index finger. Put this part in the palm of your hand. You can do the same thing with a frosted edge but I'm going to run my finger. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray and I'm gonna run my finger back and forth. Now, this is key. You want this on the inside of your piece. If you're out here, it's gonna leave a really harsh line on the other side um, where your finger ends. So you want to just run it right along the inside edge of that piece. The moisture from the baby wipe is going to help float that color as if you were doing it with a brush. And you could use an angle brush if you want to. I just like the way this looks. 
it's easy and I think you get a really pretty float of color turning that piece I do this on my journal pages I do this on my projects again if this was a little bit darker I could come in with white and frost right around the edge That's Payne's Gray. And again, just on the tip of my finger. If you're working on something rough, you might need to move um, the baby wipe on your finger because sometimes it can catch. Okay. Just like that. And again, I think that just draws your eye in softens that. Oh, just love it. Um, I noticed that I just forgot to outline this little guy right here. So we'll make sure we outline that. And come back up here to the top. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I created that. Um, again, the e-packet's on my website if you're interested in um, getting the line drawing and the wordy, 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 because I'm very wordy, step-by-step <laughs> -step instructions. And I also try and do a lot of um, pictures, step-by-step -step pictures. Um, but you also have the free video here. So you could always come back and watch this again here on my YouTube channel. I said I was going to share something with you with the IdentiPen, so let me grab it real quick. It's right here. So... Um, I learned and saw this for the first time um, looking there, and I need to look there, um, Doxy Keller. Um, and so I drew out this design. Um, so I drew this out with an IdentiPen. I mean, right on the fabric. Right on the fabric, and then painted it with DecoArt So Soft Paints. Um, you can paint over it, and then once you're done, go back over it. Um, I know that I think Donna Dewberry has a pen designs um, that she does with the same thing with the IdentiPen and fabric paint. Um, it's just such a fun tool to have in your play box, okay, or in your sandbox, in your studio um, that you can grab and go to. And sometimes when I'm drawing out a design, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll go over it with my IdentiPen because I haven't, I haven't made a pattern for it yet. So it's a great way for me to kind of keep my line drawing as I'm designing a piece. But you guys, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget the two giveaways, um, the surface and the stencils is one. And then this original piece um, will be shipped off to somebody's house. I will do a drawing next Sunday. So that's what, the 7th? of March. Can you guys believe it? I mean, this is like the last day of February. And before you know it, we're going to be saying Merry Christmas to each other and Happy Hanukkah and everything else. The year is going to fly by. So you guys have a great Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll go back and look through the comments and see if I need to answer any questions. But you guys have a great day. Make sure to play and paint. Pick up those brushes this week. Be creative and have fun. Y'all have a great day. Bye.